Evening all. Um, this is a response video to something that AI Shiatori uh, made a few days ago. Um, he did a video on the friend-enemy distinction. And uh, it's very interesting points that he made. So I'll leave a uh, link in the description below to that video so you can watch that if you haven't seen it um, before. I do recommend you uh, check it out first. I think it will make what I'm about to say make more sense. So he was talking about the friend-enemy distinction, how that sort of, well, how um, conservatives don't understand it properly, don't understand the distinction properly, get trapped into uh, discussions and arguments and, and making bad alliances. Um, it's one of the problems modern conservatism faces is not understanding uh, this, uh, this distinction. Now, he mentions this binary between friend and enemy, and we had, um, it was a live stream, so there was um, chat, live chat go going on in the sidebar, um, and I think other people weren't quite following, they were, they were making too much of the binary distinction. I, I don't think it fully covers the, um, what I think it, it is important, I don't, um, I think just calling it friend, enemy, um, leaves a lot of grey areas, leaves a lot of uh, gaps that weren't adequately filled on the night. So this is kind of, I, I've gone away, thought about it for a few days, and these are some things I've thought about since then. So rather than just friend, enemy, I, uh, and the binary, I think there are actually six distinctions on this that we can make. So I'll go through them uh, in turn. Let's cover friend. Now, as AI and I both agree, we, we both looked at Jordan Peterson in 12 Rules for Life on this. A uh, friend is somebody who wants the best for you. Um, they uh, don't want to see you come to any trouble. They don't want to see you um, hurt. They don't want to see you uh, lose. They want the best for you. And so that is a, a true friend. And sometimes I think people get sucked in. They think friend is somebody they just get along with. But when the push comes to shove, if it's between you and them at something or um, you're in trouble, a friend will actually want to stick with you and help you through that trouble. So you come through the other side stronger and better uh, rather than just somebody who's pally and friendly with you, they actually want to see you prosper and come through bad times. So that is the friend distinction. And I, th I think what uh, AI was saying is that conservatives often think, well, they're an all right sort, so therefore they're my friend. And they're not really. So whereas a friend um, wants to see the best for you, an enemy is somebody who wants to see you fail, um, they want to see you lose, they want what's worst for you, they do not want to see you prosper, and they will actively engage in activities that will make you lose, uh, make you feel bad, um, do not want the best for you, they want the opposite. And I think what's interesting with the friend-enemy thing is that with friend, you think, you know, if you're being very cordial and very genial and having a nice time with someone, you might think they're a friend when, in fact, they could be an enemy. It's so much easier when our enemies are identifiable. In warfare, the enemy is the person wearing the other uniform uh, that you've been trained to shoot at. But... Often in life, and I think this is what Peterson was saying in his book, you'll have people that will be close. So there may be work colleagues, there may be family, there may be people in your social group. But for some reason, one reason or another, they want to see you fail. Um, for example, people want you out of... A you're in a job with some people and there's one person who wants you out of the job and they will undermine you. Or there's somebody in the social circle that resents your presence in that circle. So they work to undermine you. They work to push you out of that group. And they may appear to be a friend. I think in literature, the classic case of this is Iago from Othello, the man who 
is pretending to be everybody's friend, but it, what drives him is he hates Othello. He, I hate the more, he says, and he wants Othello brought down and he wants the people around Othello brought down to boost himself. And I think that is where um, in conservative circles, the friend enemy distinction has become blurred. I remember Ian Dale, he's a conservative uh, writer and broadcaster, um, big contributor to Conservative Home. He's got a show on LBC. Now, Ian Dale is an up and down figure in my book. Sometimes he is bang on the money. Um, I remember his takedown of Grace Blakeney on Good Morning Britain. Uh, very good. You know, he can be quite staunchly conservative sometimes. Other time he is very weak. He caves in. He gives um, people who are his enemy too much of the benefit of the doubt. And here's an example of where I think he, he can be quite weak. So... Um, when Diane Abbott, Diane Abbott was going through a rough patch and she was being mocked and ridiculed because she, she was uh, saying very stupid things and people going after her personally, going after her personal appearance, which I don't think is a good tactic at all. Um, it's so easy to play the victim card if somebody goes after your appearance. You know, it, it seems like you've, if you do that... Um, then you've run out of ideas because you can't attack their ideas, you can't attack their behaviour. You can only go after what they look like. And it's just, it's cheap, it's nasty, it doesn't make you look good. So Ian Dale was defending Diane Abbott on social media. She's my friend. I get on with her. Um, we have some good times. Now, when Ian Dale was being attacked uh, by people and saying he should be kicked off LBC, he should be cancelled, did Diane Abbott stick up for him the same way? No, she didn't. That is not a true friend. Okay. Ian Dale was giving, he, he does this with people on the left. He gives people way too much benefit of the doubt and they won't stick up for him in return. So that's where the friend enemy dynamic uh, can work. And I think conservatives are often too trusting. They, they mistake mateship. They mistake the cordiality for friendship. And that's often not what's going on at all. Here's where I'm going to add the other distinctions. Um, and so the next one is ally. So what is an ally? An ally is somebody who's not necessarily your friend, but you align with enough that you will work with them. So uh, a friend is somebody in your, your deepest inner circle. You trust them, they trust you, you work together. An ally is somebody you work alongside, but there, there are points of differences. There, there, there's a reason why you're not mate, mates or, or it could be an ideological divide. I'm thinking in terms of um, there are some people who are on the centre or the centre-left who I think they're useful allies, um, but I don't see them as being in my ideological tribe. I'm thinking of somebody like, um, say, Andrew Doyle. For example, Andrew Doyle will work alongside people on the right, like Calvin Robinson or Darren Grimes or, or uh, a lot of the GB news team. But would you consider him like part of that tribe? No, because still, uh, when it comes to economics, when it comes to class, he's still pretty much on the centre left. But he's an ally because he will work with you on issues like free speech, uh, issues like freedom of conscience. So an ally is somebody who is not ideologically in your camp, but you can work with them. You can you can team up with them to tackle specific problems. So the flip side of that, and where we had friend and enemy, the flip side of ally is opponent. So what is an opponent in this case? They're not necessarily a, an enemy. An enemy is seeking by any means possible to pull you down, to get you ruined, to uh, undermine your every work. The opponent is somebody who opposes you ideologically or perhaps in um, a sporting context or in a, uh, any, well, any, any kind of social in environment where you are not sworn enemies. Uh, the, the thing about an opponent is that there is um, 
an agree an agreement perhaps unspoken between uh, two antagonists that they will play fairly that they will play by some set of pre-arranged rules uh, opponents are quite rare to find because th this is what we call the, like an honorable duel I'm thinking in the historical context of pilots in World War one on both the Allied side and the Central Powers side was that there was this concept of Knights of the air that um, they would fight tooth and nail in the air, but there were certain things they didn't do, like you wouldn't shoot at somebody who'd bailed out of an aircraft. You wouldn't shoot them down in their parachute, that's dishonorable. Uh, if you shot an opponent down and they survived the crash, you would take them back to your squadron base and you would treat them to a big dinner. You would honor them as a worthy opponent. This is the concept of an opponent. And I'm thinking in political terms, um, people have described, say, Tony Benn, as an opponent, not uh, you, for me, Tony Bennett is full of uh, awful, awful ideas, awful ideology. But there's a kind of aspect to Tony Benn that he would play by the rules. You know, there was this kind of this the man's respect for Parliament and parliamentary tradition meant he wasn't an enemy seeking to destroy you. He was an opponent seeking to win an argument against you. That's what I mean by opponents. So that there can be a kind of respect on a personal level with an opponent, um, even though you were trying to defeat them. There is just a level that you will not stoop to. You will not put in the low blows. Um, it's almost like the, your opponent is somebody who you're trying to outdo. You're either trying to outsmart you or you're trying to outskill, but you're not trying to destroy them. So the fifth category I'm going to describe is the co-belligerent. And this is something I mentioned um, in the side chat on A.I. Shiatori's video. And I don't think people understood what I meant by co-belligerent. And this is why I think friend, enemy, you know, this polarization of you're either in my camp or you're totally against me. I don't think works. So what is a co-belligerent? Well, they're not an ally. Uh, it's an important distinction to make. An ally is where your, your perhaps personal values or perhaps ideas overlap to an extent where you can work with somebody who is not, the, not on the same wavelength as you, not the same politics as you, not the, the same ideological uh, bent, or, or perhaps it's a religious thing. Perhaps a, we're talking ecumenically here that you could be a Christian and you're sort of working alongside a Jew for some community good. Um, that's actually more like an ally. Um, but a co-belligerent is somebody who's um, working towards um, a similar aim to you, but outside of that aim, uh, you don't overlap at all. You, know, you just happen to be pushing towards the same end. So in current political terms, um, this is what I'm, I was saying in the side chat the other night, is uh, when it comes to trans activism, conservatives and TERFs, uh, trans exclusionary radical feminists. Now, what's the thing that conservatives and TERFs would agree on uh, with trans activism? That they don't want to see women's sport ruined uh, by trans activism, um, women's prisons, uh, like say women's refuges for uh, women who have escaped abusive uh, relationships, um, and also preserving the distinction of woman medically. You know, so um, you don't go into a hospital and they call a woman who uh, a pregnant mother. They don't call her a birthing person. So, so, so this is where. Um, a conservative will be pushing towards the same end as a turf, but in all other respects, uh, radical feminists and conservatives are just not going to get on. They just happen to be working towards the same end. So you need to understand that a co-belligerent is um, you, you let them get on with things if they're working towards the same end. You don't try and obstruct them. Uh, just because everything else about them you don't like. You just go, OK, they're working towards this end, so I'm not going to get in their way. I'll be working towards the end 
in the, in the same way. So that's what a co-belligerent is. It was a distinction in World War II that the Finns made. I think the Finns were a little bit more um, diplomatically uh, connected to Nazi Germany in World War II. But the Finns made it very clear to the world that they were not allies of Nazi Germany. They were co-belligerents. They were working towards the same end, which is the defeat of the Soviet Union. But there were limits as to, to how much the Finns would cooperate with the Germans. Just um, The Germans wanted to impose a lot of uh, ideological conformity on the Finns, as they had done with, say, the Italians, the Romanians, the Hungarians. But the Finns were very resistant. No, they wanted to be seen as co-belligerents and not allies. So the final, the sixth distinction I want to make is what I call the obstruction. So what is the obstruction? The obstruction is a person who is ostensibly on the same side as you, but they don't cooperate with you. There, there's, there's some, it usually breaks down on a very personal level, but there's something that's stopping you and them from working with each other, working towards the same end. There's a kind of inbuilt hostility. Um, so somebody can say, ah, oh, but you two are conservatives. And yet there's a personal breakdown that you will not work together, that you will um, not cooperate. And it can extend to the fact that it's not just, okay, they do their own thing, I do mine. It's that if you try and do your own thing, they are there to, to naysay, to counter what you're doing uh, because they don't see eye to eye with you. Now, how is this different from an enemy? Well, this other person might not be an enemy. They might not want to see you destroyed. They might not want to see you fail. But at the same time, they don't, uh, they're not going to go along with you on the journey. And you you get this sometimes. Um, and it, it can flare up into uh, personal conflict. And as I said, obstruction, you know, you're trying to do your best in a situation and you've got somebody in your camp on your side, uh, in theory, but they're saying, no, 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 that's wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. And they get in the way. That's why I call it an obstruction. And you often get this in on, on the mainstream right in general, where uh, libertarians will call out conservatives, where conservatives roll their eyes at libertarians, where um, uh, you, you get uh, so, um, some conservatives, what I would call uh, pragmatic conservatives, those who have to wade through the difficulties of life and so they cannot take a purist attitude and things so they'll look at um one other group and just go oh they're just my purist crowd my purity spiral and they 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 get annoyed at that but at the same time the ones that are trying to be ideologically pure look at the uh ones who are trying to practically work their way through something and go what a cuck what a weakling, what controlled opposition, liability, uh, net negative. They use those kind of terms. So that's what I call the obstruction. And, and it cuts both ways. So um, a kind of rail politic conservative uh, will see the purist, the ideologically purist conservative as an obstruction to that. I'm trying to do something practical here and your purity is just stopping me from doing that. And at the same time, a purist, an ideological purist conservative will look at the rail politic conservative and just say, you are weakening our argument. You are weakening our cause by diluting it, by being soft around the edges. So you see what I mean about that kind of um, dynamic. So to recap, you have friend and enemy. You have ally and opponent. And then you have co-belligerent and obstruction. And that's where I think the uh, we need to drill down a little bit more and uh, recognize these kind of smaller distinctions, because I think it helps. Uh, I think the more you drill down on something, I think the more it helps people understand, because, uh, you know, reducing everything to the most simplistic binary can sometimes oversimplify it. it, it and it leads to points of conflict that don't need to be there. If we understand who our friends are and make that distinction, okay, they're a friend and they're an ally, 
um, perhaps that person is a co-belligerent. And then we understand the difference between an enemy who we fight tooth and nail because they want to see us destroyed. So we're fighting for survival against them with an opponent who you can respect, um, even though they take an opposing point of view because they are playing fairly. And then we have to understand that sometimes in our circles, we're going to meet people who are obstructions to that. So I hope that makes some sense. Um, as I said, do check out AI Shire Tories video and uh, I'll put a link down below. Until next time. Bye.